Hey everybody, welcome back. So I spent the last few days straightening and cleaning everything here. So this is this is definitely round two by this point. Uh, we'll just start with the can. So honestly, it didn't come out too bad. So we'll look at the side profile as we spin it around and it's pretty darn straight, pretty darn flat and all square. The top actually came out better than I was expecting. I didn't have to remove it from the can, but when you take a look at it, you can see we're still a little bit lower over here than we are over here. And the only way I'm gonna get that any higher is if I take that top completely off and I don't wanna to have to go that far. But the important thing is the center hole is back to being perfectly round and it is square with the rest of the body of the can. So that pipe is gonna stick up square out the top and it's gonna be square in the bottom as well. I went a few rounds with this cleaning it up. You can see I've already pre-tinned this whole area here and I've also tinned it up here where we're gonna have to solder that pipe in. Here's the piece that goes on the front of it. We've got that tinned. This is a brass or a bronze type piece by the way. That wasn't too bad. I got the upper baffle straightened back out. This is the piece that was spot welded in and had a pretty good dent in the side from the, the cave-in that happened. That's pretty well formed and good. All of our screens back here have all been cleaned. All that stuff's looking pretty good. So I guess the next step now, being that I have these surfaces tinned and I'm not gonna try getting this any straighter than it is now, I need to rivet this piece onto the side. You'll remember I had to grind and knock out the old rivets and they didn't match anything I had here. So I got busy on the lathe and I turned four new ones. So made sure they had the same flat shouldered style head. So I'm gonna have to put all four of those in, support them on the back side and get the front sides peened over. Now I'll show you my setup. I've got the first rivet in down there. That's the first one that I'm going to peen over on the front. I have a machine screw with a nut holding the adapter tight up against the can. And on this side, I have another rivet in. Of course, these vice grips are what's gonna hold it from falling out. And then I have a second machine screw with nut down there, again, holding the adapter tight to the front of the can. So this rivet is only gonna be held in for more like an alignment dowel while I go and actually peen that one over. Come over here to the other bench. And I have this large, I think it's a steel former. I don't think it's cast iron, but fits the inside of the can just fine. And that will be an excellent backstop to support the backside of that rivet while I peen that over. It should keep me from denting or damaging any part of the can. So what I'm gonna do is get that one peened and then I'll probably do this one on the other side. Ooh, sorry about that. Ooh, that's bad. And then that should pretty much have this adapter located. I can take those machine screws out and then finish out with the other two rivets. All right, all four rivets are in. So that went pretty well. So next step is to try my hand at the soldering. And yeah, that's the part that I am most dreading. So I doubt I'm gonna do any filming of that at least until I get this soldered around here. Now, the strength of this joint comes from the rivets. The solder is basically the seal. So it, at least we don't have to 100% rely on that to keep everything together. But, well, tell you what, I'm gonna take this out to their shop. We're gonna get to work on it. I think I'm gonna leave the camera here because I'm gonna need all my concentration to, well, try and get more solder on there than what ends up on the floor. <laughs> so wish me luck, everybody. Okay, so we're breaking all kinds of rules here, but I relocated back up here because the light is best in this shop. I know I usually don't have open flame in here, but yeah, okay. And I said I wasn't going to film any of this, but I figure I can just let the camera roll and <laughs> we're either about to be zero or hero. Ooh, a little bit of run. It's 
Smaller torch tip will probably do wonders, but this is the best I got. Try heating the heavy piece here and maybe I can get some transfer. It's puddling. Yeah, a little more flux here. Like I said, everybody, if it doesn't really look like I know what I'm doing, it's because I don't know what I'm doing. We're just throwing stuff at the wall, seeing if it sticks. All right, that's not so bad, huh? Didn't get too much solder on the floor. So we'll come over here for the after action report. Honestly, I'm not exactly disappointed with that. I never thought I'd be able to get it as good as it is. It's not pretty, but in Squatch World, well, that's a touchdown at the World Series that the goalie never even saw coming. I'm not gonna be able to do it any better. So I was able to get it sweated in around that inside flange as well. So I'm pretty happy with it and I'm pretty well assured that it's sealed. And see if I can give you guys a view way down in the bottom, down in here. I got some solder sweated around the heads of those rivets and it's not pretty. That wasn't fun working down in there, but it's all the way around in there, well sealed. So I'll tell you what, well, the professional like radiator guys, tin work guys that know how to solder and have the skill set and exhibit professionalism and all that are probably clawing their eyes out right now but honestly I'm kind of happy with it <laughs> it's it's way better than most things usually turn out when I try and solder so that's pretty much done so the next piece that goes in is this this is one that was crumpled heavily on this side when I took it out and I noticed when I started flattening it that we have a thinner opening here and then these start out narrow and get real wide so and it's not just stretched that way because you can see how much thicker the edge is here and then how they thin down over here and honestly I went back I didn't even know that thing was like that until I started flattening it out and looking at it I went back in the video and found that when this goes in the can it's going to go up in from the bottom it's oriented like this with the thin gap towards the outlet right here and I believe that is to direct more airflow more evenly through the interior of the air cleaner so that it's all not coming right up this front edge because it's closer to where the diesel engines pulling air out of this thing so we're gonna place that in there same orientation as in which it was originally that's one of those old detail things that I didn't realize until I actually went back and watched the old video and when we place this in here from the bottom, it's going to come up to rest against this bead that's rolled in here. It forms a little shoulder on the inside, and that is the boom, stop for this piece right here. That was just spot welded. I get along with that welder a lot better than the soldering torch, so we'll get that put in there next. Oh man, that was so quick. I do like the welding. <laughs> Much preferred over the soldering. So we got that all spotted in place. Now we can go and put the loose screens in. And I'm gonna put these again in the same order that they came out. This probably doesn't matter. You can see, I don't know if you can pick it up, a little bit of yellow overspray right there where this one actually caught a little bit of it for when they painted the can. But we'll just go ahead and, arm's probably in the way, but we'll just start packing them in there. Number three, four, five, six, seven. And finally, number eight. There we go. Got all those in there. Okay, so the vertical pipe is next. Now, 
I tried straightening the screen that was on it because it was all combed down and stuff and I came to the conclusion everything was too stretched and too mangled for me to get absolutely right again. So we rather unceremoniously sweated it off the pipe and I just cleaned the pipe up and I soldered a new one on. Now all this was was one of the loose screens that can be taken out of the bottom. It's the same piece, the dimensions were all the same. So old 2115 gave up another piece for the cause. I was able to actually get that soldered on rather well and I abandoned the oxyacetylene torch and just went to like the but uh, butane torch instead and I had a lot better luck with that on this thin stuff. That oxyacetylene torch worked pretty well in here when I could concentrate most of the heat on this heavy piece and then it would just kind of transfer into the tin but on the light stuff honestly I was really happy with how user-friendly that cooler flame was so we got that fixed up and it's it's pretty nice it fits really well so and I was sure to locate it the same distance up from the bottom of the pipe so we can get rid of that that's probably just gonna go in the scrap bin and well this is take two and take one I found out that I got a little bit ahead of myself by putting these screens in the can because I would have all kinds of trouble trying to get this pushed down through the center of those. So what I'm going to do is just transfer them out of the can and we'll just start them all on the pipe and then we'll put them all in, all stacked on here as an assembly. All right, let's try it now. You know, as it turns out, this isn't really easy to do no matter <laughs> what sequence you try and assemble it in. We're getting it though. Lots of sharp little tag ends like that one that want to hook on the edges and prevent things from going in. There we go. I think we did it. Yes, sir. I think we're there. Okay, so we're done soldering. Top ended up pretty good. 
honestly, it's like anything else about the time I'm done is when I'm pretty much starting to get the hang of it. But uh, in here, I ended up going back to the oxyacetylene tip because I could more accurately direct the heat just onto the small little joints that I was trying to solder. I replicated how this was soldered in in four places around the perimeter and with that oxyacetylene torch, I just fluxed that area down there and then cut a small strip of solder placed in there and I could direct that flame and just dance on it just until it turned liquid and, and kind of started floating. Made the bond between the can and the screen. So at this point, we can put the five removable screens into the bottom. Now watch this. Watch how easy these go in. See that? Remember how they stuck really hard when I was trying to pull them out? They just, they pretty much all just fall right out again. And that's because we've got the can accurately round again. So that is how those are supposed to go. They're supposed to be an easy slip fit, just like that. So we'll secure those with the clamp. There we are. That part of the air cleaner is done. Take you off the pipe here. Let me get a little better look at it. Honestly, I'm not disappointed with it. Oh, I was going to show you one other thing too. I think we can see up in there. There we go. Around there, we were able to sweat some solder right down to the base of that joint. So. That makes me even more confident in how that's put together up on top. So, all right. That should be the hard part. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not gonna stand up on that, on that small tube. That's the hard part. Back to the dirty cardboard again. We have the rest of this stuff to go through now. So I did a bunch of work off camera, got the oil cup cleaned out, which was gross. There wasn't a lot of oil left in it, but a lot of dirt, some sludge in the bottom, and I could tell water made its way in there because it forms a gray snot-like substance that's not very fun to have to deal with. But we got that all clean. So this baffle goes in the cup, and when I took it apart, it was positioned like this with the dished edge facing up, and it turns out that's backwards. I took note of the diagram in the parts manual. You can see the 9B8725 baffle clearly dishes down. So that's pretty easy. We just flip it over. See if I can position this with one hand. It's kind of a friction fit. There we go. Fits well. And what locates it are the six holes that are punched around the center cup. Each one of those is flared out. So they basically act as a stop for that baffle that it cannot sit down too far in and it can't block those either. And I measured everything here because we've had this all apart. I wanted to make sure everything was still gonna fit, being that we have this new high spot on the baffle that wasn't there before when it was upside down. And luckily, this high area is only gonna be a 16th of an inch off the bottom of the screen. So that's pretty well captured in position. Everything's gonna fit just fine. And again, that's why we take note of the position and the measurements of all of the fixed pieces in this can, whether they're spot welded or soldered, because everything is positioned for a reason. Okay, so we just put the cup back onto the can. And I want to show you guys here, you remember when I took this apart, I had to pry that oil cup off because the can was so distorted. That's exactly how it should be. It should just easily push on and slide right back off again. So amazing how well everything fits once everything's back to being around again. All right, last piece to go on is the outlet elbow with the band clamp. So I'll just finish tightening these four bolts. There we are. And I made a new insulator to go between the bands and the can. There wasn't much left of the old one, it pretty much fell apart. So this is just the same belting that I've been using for everything. And with the band tight, I wanna show you how well that fits around there. No more gap like it was before when the whole front side of the can was crunched in. But I tell you what, I'm pretty happy with this. We have another unique first gen component and 
I'm pretty sure we saved it. At least I'm happy with it. Like I said before, we could have some more aesthetically pleasing solder work, but for me, that is as good as it gets. Or at least I can build upon this practice for the next job, maybe do a little better next time. But still has the old Donaldson air cleaner brass tag on there. Service instructions, oil filling instructions. That's another thing. I'm gonna leave the oil out of this for now. I have a checklist that I go through before I do the first start on any machine. So just to cut down on any potential mess, we're just gonna leave that dry. But yep, we saved it. It was a lot of work. I'm glad that I did it. Okay, everybody. <laughs> the last two videos have been all leading up to this point right here. We can just hang the air cleaner on. And I have to admit, before I had this one apart, I never really gave a lot of thought to how much is inside one of these. And, you know, for being a lowly air cleaner that doesn't ever really get a lot of credit, it's kind of impressive how much rolling and stamping and soldering and engineering and thought to airflow and oil capacity. I'm, there, there's a lot to one of these things. So kind of kind of liking this now. It's not perfect. You know, you can still see a few little ding marks where I had to take that top back up and I'd like to never done that. That was probably the most challenging part of the whole thing was actually getting that formed. I think the soldering was, was even easier, but we've, uh, we've kind of come to a mutual respect. I think we've each done a few rounds of battle and I think we're friends now, right? And there it is looking good. Am I ever glad I got that ticked off the list? That was kind of an intimidating job, but now, we never did have the air cleaner top for this. That's the style that had the pre-cleaner jar. And I'm pretty sure whatever came down and crushed that air cleaner probably obliterated that too. It was not on the machine nor with it when we picked it up, but that's not a big deal. I've got more of those to use. So as always, everybody, thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. I couldn't do this if everybody didn't tune in every time I threw up a video. So much appreciated. Couldn't do it without you guys. Now maybe we can get to those transmissions.